from the depth instant tutorial. This is part 2 of the armor tutorial. If you haven't watched part 1 already, please watch it and you find the link in the description. You'll need the basics to understand this one better. Our friend Jono in the Discord. The winner of our 25 cave ground tournament has done a lot of calculations and I'll show you some of the graphs. You can mix a lot of different materials in order to form layers or composites to get the benefits from different blocks. To get the best performance for the material, Jono has done some calculations and found out that wood metal composite is the best while still fairly light. Its only drawback is the extreme bulk. You will probably never see this type of big armor slab in game, but I've made this just to test some weapons. And I can explain to you why I made it like this and maybe you'll learn something about armoring. So first we have two layers of metal, just to give the best armor type, uh, general armor type there is. And behind it we had an air gap, and this is to activate hash and heat shells and something like that. Most of these fragments will be picked up by these uh, applique panels, and they will get destroyed in the process. If they happen to get through, they will get directly behind a layer of metal backed by heavy armor. This is the best layer of armor protection we can have, uh, with not the extreme cost and weight of two layers of heavy armor. Now these poles actually are not air gaps if they're hit straight in front of it, and uh, they're usually air gaps in most directions. As you can see we have a little air space there, and it actually counts. So this will activate further um, penetrators if we for example have an advanced cannon with uh, double heat attachments, which you can have. Then we have a layer of metal to absorb the fragments from the wood, that would be created in some instances, and then we have this huge kinetic slab of wood metal composite. And behind it we have another air gap, and after it we have a layer of stone. This represents our internal armor. And behind that we of course have our squishy parts we want to protect. And remember that even though we hit straight in front, we could make sloped armor to reduce the damage. But remember that if our enemies shot from like this precision, well, then it's already sloped, and uh, this counts as sloped damage, just as much as having a slope block does. So uh, the thing that matters is the angle it comes into, and a flat block might be as good as a angled block. It all depends on how your enemies shoot you. I want to go through a couple of particular armoring situations. Like you can see, ammo barrels are very explosive and very dangerous. And when we have them like that, they chain react and explode each other. We need a method to use to make them not chain react. And you can do this in many different ways. The way I like to do it is to have metal and ammo blocks in a little checkerboard pattern like this. And when we do this, they will not chain react anymore. And you can see that only one of the ammo barrels got destroyed. The other ones did not. If you want to be a little bit more safe, you can use heavy armor for this. Or even better, just space them out enough so that they will not chain react. Now I want to talk a little bit about protecting your AI. To protect your AI you want to insulate it from EMP damage, because the EMP will destroy your AI and uh, basically wants to seek out the AI and destroy it. So what you do is you make an insulated little area. Um, stone is your best friend here. Because inside this stone block we will make a little heavy armored chest and it needs to be large enough in order to hold our AI. And this is probably too small, but whatever. Here we have our uh, tiny little AI, like that. Here is our AI. And we have this little EMP uh, proofed chest here. So the stone does not conduct EMP, which is uh, great for us. 
the heavy armor takes EMP damage. So we don't want it to get exposed too easily because uh, the heavy armor will get destroyed by EMP eventually. And if EMP damage finds heavy armor, it will destroy it and uh, that's why we want to make it last as long as possible. So we just cover this up in stone. So here we have our little protected AI core. And if you go into here, you can see we have a stone box and within the stone box we have a heavy armor box. So the uh, stone also gets the buff, uh, the armor class buff from the heavy armor uh, beneath it. But if it gets destroyed, we have the heavy armor inside of there. And if we would have the heavy armor outside of the stone, well, then it might get destroyed by EMP damage. And uh, stone insulates uh, from the EMP decently well. You can see here it has EMP damage reduction 100 per meter. So just a couple of meters and the EMP damage is completely gone. However, to be really sure, uh, we will put a couple of surge protectors around it, especially on connecting metal parts, uh, because this means that the EMP surge will travel like this, doo -doo 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 -doo, get into this block and destroy it instead of uh, trying to travel through and damage the heavy armor inside of it, or even the AI core. So uh, basically, the surge protectors are a block, it's not armor, but they suck up EMP damage. Pretty neat. Um, metal and alloy, well, they lead EMP, like anything else, so it's basically like a conductor, while wood and stone does not. Heavy armor does have EMP susceptibility, which means that uh, EMP, electromagnetic pulses, try to seek out and destroy heavy armor. Not very good. There are other blocks that also get destroyed by EMP, which is, for example, here you can see AI connectors and mainframes. They have a 60% EMP susceptibility. And this of course means that EMP will search up and destroy these blocks that are listed with EMP susceptibility. So uh, everything listed with the EMP susceptibility, it's listed, they will get destroyed if they are uh, harassed by electromagnetic pulses. Now we will quickly talk a little bit about these. These metal sheets are very thin. So basically they cost one material per block, they have almost no health and they do have normal metal armor. But they do a very little protection addition for the materials, they're probably not worth it. I'd use these mostly decoratively. There are some instances where they can be effective, but for the most part a plick panel does that job better. So uh, these I'd use mostly decoratively, but they can deflect a couple of shots from really light guns. Now I need to show you something about heat and hash. So right now we have loaded a heat round and a heat shell works like this and as you can see it's really dangerous. Let's take a look how it works. Now this is a really strong armor plate backed by heavy armor just like this and if we shoot this thing well it gets through, spawns fragments and destroy the layer behind it. Not very good. As I showed you in the armor before, we can add a little layer of applique panels in an air gap to make it survive. So if we fire, you can see it did indeed survive, uh, however one of the applique panel shots got destroyed. And here is where distance come into play. Now the air gap is bigger and we have the applique panels just in front of the internal armor on the stone. Now the fragments get more spread out and you can see it didn't get destroyed on the first shot. So that's basically how to protect against heat. The best way to completely protect against heat is of course using ERA armor. And that shot is completely reduced, however this particular block is destroyed. So yeah, ERA is not very useful, but it's the best thing you can have against heat shells. And if you want to know, a heat shell looks like this, a shaped charge followed by a couple of high explosive warheads. Now we're going to talk about hash shells. It looks like this, squash head 
and high explosive warheads behind it. A Hess shell works like this. It hits the armor, creates an explosion on the armor and make fragments from the piece behind the armor uh, destroy things inside the vehicle. Hess shells can also be countered with ERA armor, but not for very long. And you can see the fragments spawned are wider and a little bit more crazy, but they also do lots of damage. In this case, they do a lot of damage because the fragments that spawn from the heavy armor are very dangerous. Now we have exchanged the heavy armor for wooden armor, so we have metal backed by wood. The fragments spawned from the wood piece here is much less dangerous than the fragments spawned from the heavy armor. This method of defending against hash shells is called spall lining, because the spall will be spawned from the wooden piece here. I don't find spore liners particularly useful, but they do something. And to show you that, we'll need to go into damage debugging and put recording projectile effects on. Inside here, we can see spalling release point. And it has 55 armor piercing and 615 damage. And if you go here, you can see that the armor piercing is now 16 and it's 789 damage. And uh, this is why it's good to have a plick panels behind it, because if you have a spore liner of wood, well then you can pick up this damage uh, with a plick panels later. And if you have just wood behind wood, well, you probably won't do much. So the uh, armor piercing value is lower if we have a spore liner. And, um, to get the benefit from this, we'll need to have a higher armor block behind it. And using stone won't do much of a difference, so we have to have a plick panels in this case. What I find much more useful in order to uh, catch these fragments is to use heavy armor in the right way. If we use one layer of heavy armor like this, you can see it just goes through. These two layer of wedges here do cost the same like one layer of heavy armor beams. We do not get the health point buff, but we do get some really good protection against the hash. Let me demonstrate. The shots get spawned and they spread out between the wedges. And as you can see, it takes a long time to destroy all these wedges and they give really good protection against hash shells. Well, I hope this little video has made you learn something about armor. And um, if you did, check out my other instant tutorials. We will probably make some specialized armor tutorials in the future. Until next time, this is Jimmy Total Nerdy Channel, signing out.